Hello, this is the hardcore legend Mick Foley, and I know when I want to keep up with the latest in wrestling news from around the world, I check in with Dead on Dave Productions. He covers a wide variety of wrestling topics, including the career of the hardcore legend. Don't miss it. Dead on Productions. Yeah. Never gets old, never gets old. What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Dead on Dave. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to Day three of our wrestlemania breakdown we are now officially in wrestlemania week can you feel it are you starting to get excited well for some reason i woke up this morning and i started feeling the wrestlemania jitters just going through my body finally finally but it's one of those Christmas morning things. Even though your family might be poor, you know, you know it's still Christmas, so you hold out hope. That's kind of how I feel right now. It's Christmas morning, but I went a broke ass family. You know, that's what WWE has done to me. I'm still feeling the WrestleMania excitement a little bit, but I'm not expecting much. You know what I mean? But regardless, it's time for day three of the WrestleMania card breakdown and today we are talking about Seth Rollins versus Randy Orton now this feud has gone back for a while now and while I have not really enjoyed the build uh, mostly because I felt that Seth Rollins really screwed up that night when Randy turned on him you know, with the, where he basically told the world that what was going to happen and then tried to cover it up. You know, it, if you didn't already know what was happening, it was so obvious. And with Seth Rollins being the genius that he's supposed to be and the architect and all that, should he really have been blindsided that way by Randy Orton? And not only that, the fact that Seth Rollins had just gone face-to-face, nose-to-nose with Brock Lesnar, yet Randy Orton scared him shitless and had him saying, Weak ass things like, but we're a family, Randy. <laughs> we're a family. He said that. He really said it as Randy Orton's beating the shit out of him. He's, yeah, but we're a family, Randy. I mean, he said those things. That's crazy to me. But, um, yeah, you look at the curious case of Randy Orton where fans never really seem to know what they want with this guy. They want him to walk a strange line. Like, they want to cheer the shit out of him for his RKO. And th- let's not take for granted that those RK out of nowhere videos really did help his popularity with the mainstream crowd. Because they're like, oh, he's a viral video now. Let's cheer for Randy Orton. Yay, he's a viral video. I saw him on my Twitter. Woo. So now he's all, oh, he's, he's a vine. So he's exciting. Um, so let's not take that for granted. But it seems like fans want him to walk this strange line where they want him to be a face but not too facey because if he's too facey and he's a top guy and he's winning belts then he's just oh it's just wwe forcing him down our throat and that'll be with anybody by the way but randy orton is one of those guys because he's one of triple h's boys you know uh and if he's a heel he's not he's never heel enough uh he's not the heel he was when he took on Triple H when he DDT'd Stephanie and he kissed her in front of Triple H. He's not that heel. I don't if he's not gonna be that heelish, then I don't want him. Boo Randy. You know? It's like nobody knows exactly what they want out of this guy. And Randy Orton's in ring work, which is always superb, doesn't seem to get the credit that it deserves. So this is a really strange case of two guys in weird directions. But it should be a great match. Now, if you take all the other implications out of it, uh, what is going to be happening with Seth Rollins and what is going to be happening with Randy Orton after WrestleMania, if you take those things out of it, which are quite confusing because we just don't know at this point, then and you just look at the match, the match looks exciting because these two can go. And they have good chemistry together. It should be very psychologically riveting. And, of course, the moveset should just be incredible. These, these two really could steal the show because – For one, Seth Rollins is that good, and Randy Orton has always been that good. So they might be good in different ways, but they're both equally impressive. So it should be a really good match, and I'm looking forward to it. Now, as far as predicting a winner, you know, my heart's telling me Randy, but when I think about it logically, Seth Rollins needs to win this match. 
And not only does he need to win this match, he needs to win it in dynamic fashion. And they could even go like a type of double turn type of deal where we start seeing more of a face turn out of Seth Rollins. Maybe not even turning Randy Orton heel, but maybe have the rest of the authority get involved and kind of start taking out Seth Rollins. I don't know, but I, I, I think Seth Rollins' run as a heel, to me, feels like it's about over. I, I'm sure it won't be until the briefcase is decided what they're going to do with it, whether it, or not he's going to successfully cash in, which is also a possibility. Seth Rollins could cash in. There's new rumors, new, new uh, not rumors, but there's new suggestions that if Brock Lesnar is leaving, and this is something that I brought up before, if Brock Lesnar is leaving, but they don't want to give the belt to Roman and they don't want him winning this match, which is still a possibility, don't take that for granted, that The Undertaker, after for some reason successfully defeating Bray Wyatt, which I still don't get, but we'll get to that on another day, uh, I don't see why he would win that match against Bray Wyatt, but we'll, like I said, we'll talk about that later. After that match, he would interfere and take out Brock Lesnar as revenge for taking his streak last year. Also setting up a major match for next year at WrestleMania in Undertaker's home freaking state, you know, in Texas, WrestleMania 32, in which they're going to need a top draw now it's possible that they do something like john cena and the rock and undertaker does that and then you just set up the match for next year and we don't see brock for another year that's a possibility uh, i don't like that idea because i hate year-long setups like that i don't feel it really worked with rock and cena in fact they don't feel it did because they had rock come back a little early in survivor series that year and team with cena so even even they realize that you can't do an entire year of no show out of a guy. So that's what they, they could do something similar. I'm not really sure what route they're going to go because, you know, tonight Brock could have a new contract or he might not. I don't know if we're going to know the truth until after WrestleMania, but it's possible that the Undertaker does cost him and set up that match, like I said, and then Seth Rollins would be cashing in. So that's a good possibility as well. So the night for Seth Rollins could be very interesting. And I think one way or another, the match he has with Randy Orton is going to be defining where his career is going to be going from this point forward. Uh, I'm not really sure he's going to win the match. Uh, like I said, I want to think it's going to be Randy Orton because the way they built this feud. And I don't think there's going to be a lot of face victories at WrestleMania. Uh, but logically, I would go with Seth Rollins. If I'm booking this, if I'm building something for the future, I'm going with Seth Rollins because a victory over Randy Orton is huge for his career. And I think that you need to start building uh, some of your younger guys a little more convincingly and a really good win here uh, over a guy like Orton, who's, let's face it, he's already a Hall of Famer. He's going into the Hall of Famer, there's no question, would be absolutely massive for him. Now, I don't know how much the backstage, backstage politics has to do with this current situation because we don't know exactly how much punishment is raining down on Seth Rollins from the dick pic Twitter incident. Now, it seems to me like a lot because he's looked like an idiot ever since it's happened. And that's unfortunate. But I guess we'll find out at WrestleMania. What I am predicting is this. A really solid match. A lot of back and forth. I think it's going to be one of those multiple kickout matches. Look for a Ring of Honor style match where it's just, they really go for it. I think we're going to see a lot of different things. Or it's going to be a crappy uh, friggin' authority getting involved. And that's a possibility too. But who knows. Uh, they could also kind of work this into the Sting Triple H angle. I'm not sure exactly how they want to handle it as of yet. But don't, don't be surprised if there is a massive change to the match at some point. So let me know what you guys think about this match down in the comment section below. And uh, also, if you want to get involved in WrestleMania week right here on Dead on Dave Productions, you can go ahead and uh, hit me up on Skype, D-A-V-I-D-V-A-N-C-U-R-A, -A, and let me know that you want to make a five-minute or less WrestleMania prediction video sometime in the next couple of days and you send it to me I'll tell you where to send it when you hit me up on Skype and I will air it because at the end of the week 
uh, probably Saturday, maybe even Friday, I'm going to air a video just of viewer WrestleMania predictions. I did the same thing for Royal Rumble, and I'm going to do the same thing for this, and I think it'll be a lot of fun. So let me know if you want to be involved, okay? Let me know down in the comment section below, or let me know on Skype, either way, and I'll let you know where to send the video. Five minutes or less, your predictions, okay? I appreciate all the support, guys. Uh, the show last night, the live, Dead on Dave Live, went really well. I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. A lot of people turned out for it. So keep your questions coming, and I'm sure we're going to have a hell of a lot to talk about this upcoming Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, for two hours of Dead on Dave Live. Thanks a lot, and we'll catch you guys a little bit later on with some more daily focus and Dead on Dave action. Peace.